What is going on everybody? So I'm out here in the mountains today and I have the new iPhone 14 Pro and this bad boy has a 48 megapixel camera on it. And so I'm wanting to take some test shots with this and then compare it with my Nikon Z7 II. This camera has a 45 megapixel camera on it. And so not all three cameras on the, the new iPhone Pro have that 48 megapixel sensor. I think it's only the normal one. So it's like a 24 millimeter equivalent. And on my Nikon, I have the 24 to 120 millimeter lens on. So I'll shoot this at 24 millimeters. And that way we have uh, a comparable focal length to uh, compare some test shots with. And you know, this is more just kind of for fun. I'm not expecting this to do better than a, you know, a $3,000 camera, but uh, yeah, we'll have some fun and just see what, uh, see what we get. Okay, so here's a shot I'm gonna do right here. So you got the iPhone over here, kind of framed up, something like that. And then I have a very similar composition on the back of the Nikon there as well. And both cameras are shooting raw here. And I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and take the shots. Now they're both on, they both have a self timer. So once I press the shutter, it's gonna wait a couple seconds to take the shot. That way I don't shake the camera at all when I'm taking the shot. And same thing, and I'm gonna focus on the same spot for both cameras as well. So I'm kind of focused on the mountain in the back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I got that focus. Then I'm just gonna take that shot. And again, I have this on a self timer as well. So after three seconds, it took, took that shot. All right, so for this next shot, I'm gonna shoot that leaf there. So the leaves are starting to kind of turn a little bit in some places. And so that's the that's what I'm gonna shoot. So I'm gonna shoot with the Nikon here first, and then I'm gonna just keep the same tripod, and then I'll put the iPhone on there and take a shot there as well. Okay, so now I have the uh, iPhone set up, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm focused on the leaf there, and we'll take a shot. Okay, so now for this shot, I turn the camera vertically. And you can see we got that uh, kind of nice reflection here of the trees and then the mountain there. And there's a little bit of light hitting up there too, which is kind of nice. So I'm just gonna focus now on that, the peak in the back and take the shot. Just gonna take that shot here. Oh, and one note here about the Nikon. So I do have this set at its base ISO which is 64, and then I have the um, aperture set to F9, I believe. Yeah, F9, because I did some testing with this uh, lens a couple months ago, and I found that the center sweet spot for this lens was, the aperture was F8, and the edge sweet spot, the aperture was F11. So I'm kind of just going in between F8 and F11 to get the best performance out of this lens at 24 millimeters. So I am doing a, a two, two second exposure for this shot because it is getting dark outside. And that's kind of what the composition looks like. And I have my focus point kind of right, right there where that red square is just turned green. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot here and then I'll do the same thing with the iPhone. All right, so now I have the iPhone set up here. So let's go ahead and take the shot. All right, I think that's enough shots for tonight. So let's head back to the computer and compare the results. All right, so we are in Adobe Lightroom now and I have all of the images imported here. And so just to let you know, I have made some, some minor adjustments to the images here. Uh, just some minor exposure and white balance adjustments just to make the uh, images a little bit easier to compare. And uh, just to keep, give you an idea of what I've done, so I have this image down here that I haven't touched yet. So I'll go ahead and show you what I've been doing. So this is one of the Apple RAW files. And you can see it has this profile, Apple embedded color profile. And what I've been doing, I've just been changing it over to the Apple Pro RAW profile. And that'll fix the exposure. And then, you know, I might do a little bit of white balance tweak uh, just to make it a little bit more natural. and. In some cases, I've boosted the shadows a little bit or brought them down or brought the highlights down. But what I have not done, I have not touched any of these other sliders. I haven't touched, you know, the saturation or vibrance or the curves, any of the colors, 
color channels here and none, I haven't touched sharpening at all I've just left it at the uh, Adobe default uh, sharpening levels for all the images no noise reduction added no lens correction nothing else so just some minor exposure and white balance adjustments all right so let's go ahead and compare some of these images so first I will select these two and so just to let you know if you look on the upper left up here so you see this file it's a .nef so this is a Nikon RAW file and you can also see down here it has the Nikkor lens um, and so the the .dng file over here on the right so that's one of the iPhone RAW files and you can see down here it says iPhone 14 Pro so so you can see which image is from which camera so you can you can also see that there's an aspect ratio difference here between the two cameras so on the Nikon has a 2 by 3 and the iPhone has a 3 by 4 aspect ratio that's why the, the iPhone photo looks taller and then the uh, Nikon photo looks wider so anyways let's go ahead we'll zoom in to 100% here so let me sync these up and if we look at the Nikon over here there's so much more detail versus the iPhone so the the, the trees over so this is where I focus for uh, both images and the iPhone just looks soft and kind of mushy back here whereas the Nikon is still bringing in so much detail back there and then same thing with like uh, this tree um, on the iPhone it looks pretty soft and the uh, Nikon looks nice and sharp so there is a very noticeable difference between the two cameras which honestly makes me kinda happy because I spent a lot of money on my Nikon gear and so I definitely I'm glad that it performed better than you know a smartphone but the the phone does for a phone it, I think it looks pretty good though I mean especially you know if you're zoomed out it's a lot harder to tell the difference between the two images but once you kind of zoom in it's, it's definitely noticeable all right let's look at the, the leaf photo here so select both of these and bring these in and let me actually uh, I'll bring this over oh yeah so uh, another huge difference here the Nikon is just looking really good really sharp really detailed the iPhone in comparison does not look detailed as much like nearly as much but it's there is still some detail there I mean you can still see like some of these lines let's compare the Nikon it's just a lot crisper over at the Nikon but I mean, even the iPhone, you can make out a lot of this, a lot of this detail. It's just not nearly as good as the Nikon. All right, let's keep moving on here. I'm gonna select these two. Okay, we got the Nikon on the left and iPhone on the right again. And let's see here. Zoom in. Let me sync these up. And it's kind of the same story, just a lot more detail. You can can make out individual trees over here in the mountain, whereas over here it's they kind of just blend together a lot more. Just not as not as much clarity there. But again, I think it's still pretty pretty darn good for a phone. Just looking at some of these leaves, you can get a lot of detail here get some detail here it's just again not as good and then we got the tree image here compare these now it looks like I didn't really get the framing exactly the same or really that close because this part right here on the iPhone is cut off up here on the the Nikon image but I can but I do know that I focus kind of in the same area which was like kind of in here so just zooming in let's unlock this again yeah it is just a, a really big really big difference between the two images but again when you're zoomed out here it's a lot harder to tell the difference yeah so there you have it so that's just a, a little fun comparison between the you know professional level 
camera versus uh, you know the new iPhone. Um, I think the the new iPhone is pretty good for being a phone, and you know I do take a lot of shots with my phone, um, and so I am glad to have that extra resolution. I'm sure I will put it to use uh, over the next year, two years, or however long I have this phone. And uh, if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to my channel because I have a, a lot of landscape photography related content coming out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video.